Hello everyone, and welcome to round 12 of the 2018 Tata Steel Chess Tournament, a game where Carlsen once again creates something uh, out of nothing. Uh, but before I show you that game, I would just like to quickly show you a game between uh, Gawain Jones and uh, Shakhtar Mamedyarov. As that game uh, lasted only 8 moves, I don't want to make an entire video about it, but uh, I would just like, like to show it to you and uh, hear your opinion about the game. Uh, here Gawain Jones opened with e4. Uh, we had e5 by Mamedyarov. Knight to f3, knight to f6, the Petrov defense, knight captures, d6, all standard theory, knight to f3, knight captures on e4, we have c4, knight to c6, knight to c3, uh, knight captures, we have d captures, and here Mamedyarov played g6. Uh, bishop to g5 was played, and after bishop to e7, Gawain Jones played bishop to h6. Uh, Mamedyarov quickly responded with bishop to f8, we have bishop to g5, bishop to e7, bishop to h6, bishop to f8, and bishop to g5. Uh, and in this position, both players agreed to a draw. Now, what's uh, interesting about this is that uh, Mamedyarov was in the lead. So, why would he take a draw? Okay, he does have the black pieces, but uh, he is 150 rating points uh, higher rated than Gawain Jones. And uh, this was like... Uh, uh, black isn't worse here. He, he can still continue the game. Either either now, he you know, he is a kind of player that will play f6 and after queen e2 check, maybe play king to f7. Uh, or... Uh, simply bishop to e7 and after this bishop goes to h6 uh, then play bishop to e6 and maybe go for a queenside castle but uh, for some reason he agreed to a draw here uh, I'm interested uh, what do you think about this uh, why did Mamedyarov accept the draw here and why did Gawain Jones force this variation as he does have the white pieces so I mean okay you did get a draw against a higher rated opponent but uh, why, why, are, why are you here if, if this is how you want to play chess? So let's get back to our original game. Uh, Carlsen has the white pieces and he faces Maxim Matlakov. Uh, we have e4, e4 uh, c5, Matlakov goes for the Sicilian defense, knight to f3, e6, d4, c captures on d4 and knight captures on d4. Knight to c6, we have knight to c3, uh, queen to c7 and bishop to e3, the Taimanov variation. Uh, we have uh, a6, uh, this is the Bostrikov variation of the Taimanov, uh, queen to d2 and queen to, uh, bishop to b4. Uh, f4 by Carlsen, knight to f6 now, uh, eyeing that e4 pawn since uh, the, the knight is pinned. Uh, bishop to d3 defending the e4 pawn and knight to a5 now, with ideas of coming to c4, uh, forcing either either capturing the dark square bishop or forcing bishop captures on c4 grabbing the light square bishop uh, so carlson plays a3 we have bishop captures on c3 queen captures on c3 queen captures and b captures on c3 uh, d5 e captures on d5 e captures on d5 and knight to b3 by carlson uh, with the idea that if knight captures knight carlson will improve his pawn structure when uh, the c pawn recaptures on b3 so knight to c4 by Matlakov, and we have bishop to d4, not allowing uh, knight to capture the bishop. Uh, knight to e4, and here Carlsen played knight to c5. Uh, it took Matlakov some 25, maybe 26 minutes in this position uh, to decide his next move, and uh, he played knight captures. Uh, we have bishop captures, and here bishop to d7, preparing a queenside castle. Carlsen immediately castles queenside, we have queenside castle by Matlakov, and now comes bishop captures on c4 d captures on c4 and bishop to b6 uh, and rook to e8 and this is a very uh, very cool position because uh, as you can see uh, this pawn on c4 is very weak Carlsen does have double c pawns but he will very soon win this pawn and uh, one other thing you have to consider that uh, these are opposite colored bishops so if the rooks get exchanged uh, it's very likely this is going to be a draw so we have rook to d4 by Carlsen going after the c4 pawn and here Matlakov uh, has to make a choice. He will either play bishop, uh, rook to e6, going after the bishop on b6, uh, or he may try to defend the pawn with a move like a bishop to b5. But then Carlsen has rook h to d1, doubling up on the d-file, and with this rooks uh, eyeing, uh, eyeing the d8 square and the bishop also protecting it, uh, that king is stuck there for the rest of the game, and it's only Carlsen who can make any progress in this game. So instead of bishop to b5, after this rook to d4 move, uh, Matlakov decides to go for rook to e6, better to get some activity. Uh, rook captures on c4 with check, rook blocks to c6, rook captures and bishop captures. And uh, here 
The, the bishop is attacking the g2 pawn, but Carlsen plays rook to d1. And uh, what do you play here? Uh, here it took Matlakov, I think, again, some 12 minutes, maybe even more, maybe even 15. Uh, and after that he decided to capture the g2 pawn. Another idea he might have tried uh, is maybe, maybe playing a move like h5. h5 and after g3 maybe going bishop to d7. Uh, taking control uh, of, of these light squares, for example, h5, g3, and now bishop to d7. It's a pretty good gr control of these light squares here. Uh, but okay, after rook to d1, he decided to capture. Carlsen played rook to g1, and here uh, bishop to e4 was played. Uh, here, Judith Polgar uh, was in the studio of the Tata Steel Chess Tournament, and she said, uh, okay, bishop to e4, but maybe even bishop to d5, as you'll see that this also isn't uh, without merit. After, for example, bishop to d5 and Carlsen captures, uh, now, for example, h5. And now, the bishop here is guarding the f7 pawn, and uh, this rook isn't really that big of a threat here on the 7th rank. Now even the king can enter the game. Uh, Matlakov, on the other hand, after rook to g1, decided to play bishop here. Uh, Carlsen captured, and we have bishop to g6, now locking the rook. And uh, here f5 is an idea, uh, forcing bishop to capture and then capture the f7 pawn, uh, but Carlsen doesn't go for this. He plays a4, and this was the first move that Carlsen actually spent time to play. He, to, he spent some 12 minutes on this move. Uh, rook to f8, uh, now if f5 comes then seems like rook is protecting the spawn, but not really as you'll see. Carlsen plays king to b2 and we have king to d7. Matlakov also wants to uh, get his king into the game. Uh, but here Carlsen does play f5. So what's the idea? Bishop captures and now rook to c5, kicking this rook away from f8, so rook will capture on f7. Uh, rook to c8 attacking the bishop, but first rook captures with check, king, e king e6 and now rook to e7 check. Uh, king to f6 and bishop to b4. Uh, a5 is played, you can't capture the pawn as the rook would be hanging on e7, uh, so bishop to a3. Here rook to c4 was played uh, as Carlsen is attacking the b7 pawn, now Matlakov is attacking the a4 pawn. Carlsen captures, Matlakov captures and rook to a7. Either saying to Matlakov, either your rook will stay here uh, inactive uh, as long as it wants, or you will move it and I will capture the a5 pawn. Uh, so you, you don't uh, really want to keep your rook there and uh, one other thing that Carlsen saw is that rook h4 is impossible going after this pawn because of bishop to e7 check picking up the rook so this is very nice uh, in Carlsen's favor after rook to a7 uh, rook to e4 was played uh, Carlsen captures and uh, here uh, he, Carlsen is up two pawns uh, but as you can see uh, rook, rook e2 is coming and now there is no way to defend this pawn so Matlakov will grab one pawn uh, also, the h2 pawn is attacked, so bishop to d6, defending the h2 pawn, and now comes bishop captures on c2. And here, uh, Matlakov is threatening some discoveries, but Carlsen simply pushes c4 as all of his pieces, and this h2 pawn uh, is on a dark square, so no worries there. Uh, king to e6 here, uh, we have rook to a6, and uh, here, this is move uh, 39. Uh, Carlsen's 40th move and Matlakov needs to make one more move to reach time control and he was uh, below 5 minutes. I think uh, at, at the time he played this move he had like 1 minute left on the clock, uh, so he definitely had to decide what to do. And best move here is uh, probably bishop to e4 to, to, to pose problems for this pawn, so, so it can't really be pushed further. Uh, but in time control he played uh, bishop to f5, this discovers a check to Carlsen's king. Uh, king to c3, and now that the time control has been reached, uh, he was granted more time on the clock, now he plays bishop to a a e4, as the bishop really does uh, belong on e4 more than on f5. King d4 by Carlsen, uh, king to f5, and here we have rook to a5 check. King g4, uh, c5 now, we have bishop to f3, and rook to a7, attacking the h7 pawn. h6, and here Carlsen plays uh, rook to h 7 again attacking that pawn. Rook to e4 check, king to d3 and rook to e6 now. And here we have king to c4. Now the king will uh, go up the board either here or, or or maybe through d5 if the bishop moves. Uh, bishop to c6 not allowing the king to go up the board but now comes rook to c7 kicking, kicking the bishop back. 
Uh, bishop to h1 and now king to b5. Uh, we have h5 and now comes rook to g7 check. And uh, I believe it, it was somewhere before this move, uh, somewhere in this position, uh, that as I saw a tweet on Twitter that the Norwegian uh, supercomputer Sassy, or I believe uh, the name is Sassy, uh, predicted that Carlsen will, uh, that not Carlsen will, but that White has a forced checkmate in 28 moves. I don't know if it was exactly in this position or maybe a move before this position, but that White had a forced checkmate in 28 moves. And uh, I don't have access to this variation, but maybe some of you do. So if you have access to this uh, very nice uh, force, uh, forcing variation in 28 moves, uh, do share in the comments. I will add it in the description. Uh, so rook to g7 by Carlsen. And here you probably want to play king to f5. Uh, you know, bring the king closer to the action. Uh, but it, it's hard to say, probably king to f5. In this position, king to h4 was played, and this looks pretty terrible. Uh, now this king is completely cut off from the game, and uh, here it seems Carlsen missed a forced win. That was actually very forcing. This king to h4 move seems to be a great blunder. Uh, here, bishop to e7 seems to win the game immediately. After bishop to e7 check, uh, you can either capture it, but that then you're just lost. Uh, after king to h3, you have this rook to g3 check, and now uh, the only move the king has is king captures on h2. Uh, and now you play bishop back to d6, <clears throat> and as you can see, the king has nowhere to go. So your first instinct is, uh, okay, I'll capture the bishop, and then I'll grab the rook. But if you do this, rook captures, pawn captures, and king captures rook, then you get d7, and there is no more way for this pawn to be stopped. This is completely winning. Uh, one other idea after this bishop to d6 move, uh, since you can't capture it, uh, you, you want to place the rook somewhere where it will be protected after Carlsen delivers a discovered check. The only square for this is e4, as the bishop is now protecting the rook on e4. Uh, but now, uh, simply rook to d3 check. Uh, the king has to move, king moves, and now simply push c6. Uh, rook has to go back to block the pawn, c7 is coming, rook to c8, and now comes bishop to e5. Uh, the threat, of course, is rook to d8, and after any move black plays, you simply play rook to d8, and here uh, uh, black will have to sacrifice a pawn. He, he will capture it, bishop captures, and uh, it's a completely winning position for white, as this pawn can never be promoted. Uh, the bishop is guarding the h2 square, white can simply play rook to h8, and uh, there is no way this pawn is ever uh, becoming a queen. But after king to h4, Carlsen had a different idea. He played rook to g1, uh, we have bishop to a8 now, getting the bishop out of the way. King to b6 now, rook to e2, uh, we have king to c7, uh, bishop to d5, and uh, rook to g3 now. Uh, the idea behind rook to g3, uh, it, it's, it's uh, you know, it, it has a lot, of, uh, a lot of ideas, because uh, one of the ideas is actually just to play uh, for example, king to d8 and then bishop to e7. And if the rook ever moved, this would be checkmate. And even if the rook doesn't move, uh, black will have to sacrifice a rook for this bishop. So here, bishop to h1 was played, and here Carlsen plays rook to c3. He doesn't go for the fancy line. Uh, rook to c3, we have king to g4, and now c6, and it was finally in this position uh, that Matlakov resigned the game. Uh, is it too soon? Uh, well... It, it does appear to be too soon, but it's really not. You can simply play king to d7 here, push the pawn, and it's game over. And uh, one other thing is that even if you push and black sacrifices the bishop for the pawn, uh, white is still winning as the pawn, the pawn on h2 is protected, the bishop is guarding it. And after Carlsen wins this pawn, then uh, this bishop is, is a dark square bishop and the queening square is also a dark square. So even if the rooks get exchanged, this pawn is of the right color and this is completely winning. So there it is, a very nice game from round 12 of the 2018 Tata Steel Chess Tournament. Uh, Magnus Carlsen is once again uh, tied in first place with 8.5 points uh, with Anish Giri who also achieved a very nice victory against Baskaran Adivan. I will also show that game and it's uh, very unfortunate for Shakar Mamedyarov that he decided to go for that quick draw. Uh, against the Gawain Jones, but, you know, he probably thought that since both uh, Carlsen and Giri probably won't win their games today, Carlsen 
I, I don't know what he thought, but uh, both Carlsen and Giri won their games, so now he's half, half a point behind them. But he does have the white pieces tomorrow, so even if he wins tomorrow, he might still uh, catch up to them. So yeah, uh, I do hope you enjoyed this game. Uh, I would like to thank Askar Kazimov, Carl Zippel, Gannett Tazbasi and Steve Whitlock for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching and I will see you soon.